Cloud again, and welcome to your very first CSS Grid tutorial. Alright then, so before we start talking about the awesomeness that is CSS Grid, I first of all want to make sure you're up to speed with HTML and CSS, because if you're not, this is not the course for you, my friends. You want to check out either my HTML for Beginners series or my CSS for Beginners series. The links to both of those are going to be down below and popping out on your screen right about now. So for the rest of us, at some point in our front end development career, we have probably been tasked with creating a simple layout similar to this. We have a header at the top, some main content, then we have some kind of sidebar with a couple of different sections inside that, and then a footer at the bottom. So nothing too taxing, just a simple layout. And using CSS, there's been various ways over the years we can accomplish this kind of layout. So one of the most archaic ways is to use floats. So this is what we all used to do. And we'd, for example, just place this at the top without floating it because it's full width. Then when we get to this part right here, we have two sections, the right section and the left section. So what we'd probably do is place a wrap around this left section, float it to the left, and then embed two different sections inside that. Then we'd float the main content to the right. And of course, because we did that, we've taken all of these elements out of a normal document flow, then it collapses. We get this collapse and this footer sinks up behind the content. So what we need to do is come up with some kind of clear fix to place that at the bottom, that footer, and it appears at the bottom. And this all seems a little bit hacky, right? So we don't tend to use floats for this kind of reason anymore. And this is the markup for using this layout. So we'd have these kind of extra divs for the middle section and the sidebar so we can wrap the other elements and float them correctly. Um, and we don't really want to add in that unneeded content. It's just kind of for the benefit of the layout, if you like, right? So then what we did is we moved on to Flexbox. Hallelujah. Flexbox was awesome because it allowed us to create these different layouts without using floats. But again, it has its drawbacks. For a start, Flexbox is only good in one direction. So we can either use it in row direction or column direction, if you like. We can't use them in the same direction at once. Also, we still have to use some extra markup if we want to nest these flex items, much like we have done over here. So what I've done here is I've flexed this to the right, the sidebar, and this to the left. Then I've nested these two items within that flex item. So we have this extra markup that we don't really want as well. So we can accomplish these kind of layouts really simply using CSS Grid as well. And this is a huge leap in creating cool, responsive, flexible layouts on web pages. It is immense, believe me, you're going to learn all about it. So we can create this kind of same layout very simply using CSS Grid. And I'll show you the markup for that. So it looks something like this. The content div right here acts as the grid wrapper. Then we have whatever elements we want inside that grid displayed there. And we don't have to nest these elements with inside other elements. For example, these two here, the aside and the nav, which are here and here, we don't need to nest those within a div to place them there. We just place the elements we want to appear on the grid inside that grid wrapper, right? And the cool thing is, it doesn't really care for the order of these elements. For example, this main right here, could in fact be underneath the aside and this is not going to make a difference to the layout because what i'm saying here is look i've got these elements inside this grid and i want you to place these elements at different positions inside this grid irrespective of where they are inside the grid wrapper right so we have ultimate flexibility here and also no extra or needed markup another cool thing about css grid is that we can rearrange the content depending on the screen size. So for example, we've just seen this kind of layout. Imagine we had that for the desktop. Now, because CSS Grid doesn't care for the order of the elements inside the HTML markup, for a mobile, we could say, well, okay, I want you to position the footer on a mobile under the header. It doesn't care that it's at the bottom of the markup. Now using flex or floats, this would be quite tricky. We might have to use some jiggery pokery or JavaScript to do this, which is quite hacky. With CSS Grid, we don't need to do this because CSS Grid just treats the web page as a grid. That's all it is, a kind of box of rows and columns. Then within the grid wrapper, we're just adding in our HTML elements that we want to add within this grid. And it doesn't matter what order they're in. So I could say, well, okay, I want an element there. The next element I want to place 
here at the bottom, the next element up there on the right, and the next element down there on the left. So we're just taking elements with inside our HTML structure and we're placing them in different sections on that grid. Then we can rearrange this for a mobile how we see fit. So CSS grid is really, really cool and you can do an awful lot of different things with it. So we'll be seeing how to make these kind of layouts, first of all, with CSS grid, learning the basics. Then we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you how to make a 12 column grid to create layouts and how you can toggle a grid so you can see what your layout is doing at the same time, okay? We can also create mosaic style layouts like this. So I'll be showing you how to do something like this as well, really simply with CSS grid. Now, as always, I've created course files for every single lesson in this tutorial series. So you wanna to head to the CSS grid playlist repository on my GitHub to access the code for these lessons. I'm gonna leave the link to this down below. And if you wanna take a look at the code for lesson three, for example, you just select the lesson three branch right here, and you're gonna see an index file. Go into that and you're gonna see all the code right there, okay? So now you know why CSS Grid is so freaking awesome. In the next tutorial, we're gonna jump right in and take a look at how we can display elements on the page in different columns.